Drei Gläser. We use two main senses when we watch films, sight and hearing. It's the job of the director to give the story to us through those two mediums in the way he or she sees fit. The way the director presents his or her story is their particular style. Different styles can create a trademark look that we identify with particular directors. The dark worlds of David Fincher, the symmetry of Wes Anderson, or the gothic tones of Tim Burton. Everyone loves beautiful cinematic images. These images have the ability to show massive scale or extreme intimacy and evoke intense emotion from an audience. Creating the perfect blend of light, color, and an actor's performance can make some of the most culturally iconic scenes that will live as long as film exists. But sometimes the mark is missed. Sometimes a beautiful image becomes only that, a beautiful image. Just because a shot is beautiful doesn't mean your audience will connect with what is happening on screen on an emotional level. When someone says that a film was all style and no substance, what do they mean by that? Personally, when I make this claim, I mean that the film cared so much about the visual and auditory components to the point that the story suffered. A great example of this problem is Tron Legacy. This sequel brought the original 1982 movie to full life. The futuristic digital world was amazing. The use of cold light and a clean glass world created stunning visuals. This was paired with a score that was perfect for the feeling of the film. This obsession over style created a story that was filled with forgettable characters and an uninteresting plot. Flat characters with poor motivation moved through a highly stylized world that was just that, highly stylized. And it wasn't enough to hide the blatant problems with the narrative. This problem has recurred over and over throughout the history of film, especially in the last few years. Zack Snyder has been at the forefront of this type of filmmaking for a long time. His visual style is one that is easily recognizable, even iconic at times. This is Sparta! But he strives to achieve the perfect image, and he wants to hold to that image as long as possible, whether or not it adds anything to the plot. You don't have to look far to see how much Zack Snyder loves his images, especially in slow motion but telling a story that impacts the viewer should always supersede creating beautiful images. But what happens when you create a connection between story and style? I think one of the best examples of this is Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive. Refn's visual style is most noticeable in his use of vibrant colors. He uses colors in such striking ways because he is colorblind. I wanted to show to everyone else that having any kind of handicap can also be a blessing. Refn's use of color and drive makes it one of the most visually stunning films I've ever seen. It uses a mixture of blue, red, and orange throughout the film. The use of these colors together is nothing new in movies. If anything, these colors are overused. It's not the colors themselves, but the intentional way they are used to complement the story. This intentionality is most noticeable with the driver and his relationship with Irene. Just letting you know, the rest of this video will spoil all of Drive. Early in the film, it is established that the driver's world uses a predominantly cold blue color palette, and Irene's world uses a predominantly red and dark orange color palette. The driver is a character that is familiar with the harsh environment of the criminal underworld. Irene has only had a small amount of exposure to this world and lives in a more innocent environment. These two worlds influence one another at different points in the film. When the driver enters Irene's apartment for the first time, we see that the walls of the room are blue and dark orange. Irene's husband is in prison, which explains the presence of blue already in Irene's house even before the driver enters her life. When they begin their conversation, the driver is framed in a blue background, and Irene is framed in a dark orange background. This striking color difference separates them even though they are in the same space. Also note how the driver's blue shadow sits in the mirror, overshadowing Irene's husband and son. When Irene asks the driver, What do you do? She moves from her position. This question about his world briefly places her with him. This is shown by her temporarily moving into the blue room in the wide shot. But his answers to her questions keep his life hidden from her, and she is again framed in a dark orange background. When Irene comes and visits the garage, the driver wears blue and she wears a bright red sweater. First he was in her world, now she is in his. At least what she thinks is his world. After they spend the day together, he has fully entered her life. The color represents this as he walks down the monochromatic dark orange hallway holding Benicio. Their relationship is growing, but the driver is still keeping his real life from Irene. They sit in her apartment and talk, while the frame is split by the walls and the colors. 
They are growing closer, but he isn't telling her the whole truth, and she is still married to a man in prison. From the outside looking in, they look as though they have become a normal family, but the picture of her husband sits in the background, the one thing that could shatter this counterfeit relationship. And it happens. Her husband, Standard, comes back, back into Irene's orange world. At the same time of his return, the driver sits in his cold blue apartment, trying to distract himself. The hallway is where all three characters are together for the first time, a seemingly neutral place where all the masks and lies stay secure. But the dark worlds of the driver and Standard collide. Both men are keeping things from Irene. When Standard gets into trouble, the driver and Standard create an unexpected alliance. The apartment, now without Irene, is drab and dark. She gave the warmth and light to it. Now the cold world is slowly getting in. Benicio is now a part of this cold world, dragged into it by the people around him. After the driver realizes that Standard is in trouble, he goes to talk to Irene. They are in a neutral place, but he wears blue and she wears red. He doesn't want to shatter what he has with her, but the cracks between the two worlds are beginning to show. One of the most interesting scenes in the film is when all four people eat dinner together. Everyone is wearing blue, in a blue room. Yet Irene still sits in an orange background. The lives of the driver and Standard are infecting Irene and Benicio, but Irene is still unaware. Despite the driver's best efforts, the worlds collide. Irene watches the newscast of Standard dying. Her world is crumbling and she is beginning to see what is actually around her. When the driver comes back for Irene, she is the only thing in the scene that is blue. He's trying to fix what he's done, but he can't. Then everything shatters in the elevator. The driver knows there will be a struggle. He kisses Irene, then enters his own world, killing the hitman. This action destroys Irene's perception of him. Everything is blue. She has now seen firsthand the world that the driver and her husband inhabit. She has watched brutality that she has never seen before. Now the driver is in full orange. He understands what he just allowed her to see. He has destroyed her innocence and her world. When he explains to Irene that he's leaving, she is wearing red and haloed and orange light in a blue room. The driver understands what he did to her and he is going to try to make it right. The last time we see Irene, she is wearing red in the orange hallway. The driver did it. He sacrificed his life, but he was able to keep her safe from his world. A director can impact a film to the point where the story couldn't live outside of their particular style. There will always be a place for stunning visuals, but they must be paired with brilliant stories. This combination creates the peak of film. It creates an artistic product that gives a brilliant example for why we use film to tell stories in the first place. Thanks for watching.